Happy Friday. We have made it through another week together, Ice Sox fans. How's everybody doing? Joseph Zakshesky, the broadcaster for your favorite hockey team, once again joining you for another episode of Ice Hogs Rewind. It's Friday night. I got the good tunes going on right behind me. As you can see, we'll be having some jams throughout the broadcast this evening. And, of course, I got my Ice Hogs gear ready to roll uh, just behind me as well. As tonight on the Ice Hogs Rewind, we go back to 2018 for Rockford Peaches Night and Pink in the Rink in the fight against cancer and a thrilling matchup once again as the Ice Sox square off against the Ontario Reign, and we'll dive into that matchup in just a couple of moments. We do have some news, and we'd love to cover some ground with you before we get into the broadcast. We would love to continue to receive your nominations for our Hometown Heroes program. You can find out more information on how you can nominate a, a member of your community that has made a tremendous impact during these tough times that we are currently living in at IceHogs.com. You can nominate them at the very bottom of the article. That's where the form is all the top. We have photos of the previous nominated uh, hometown heroes that we are celebrating but we would love to not only nominate them and celebrate them on our social media channels during this time but invite them and their families out to a future Rockford Ice Hogs game so a great cause and we want to say thank you on behalf of the Rockford or Ice Hogs organization so icehogs.com to nominate your hometown hero and also the donations continuing to roll in and again thank you a $10 donation uh, on icehogs.com and through the Ice Hogs Charitable Foundation gets you a ticket to a future Ice Hogs game it donates a ticket to a first responder and essential community worker during this time and all 10 bucks every single penny goes to those community programs and we'll have more information uh, on those programs a little bit later on throughout the uh, spring and into the summer on how those will impact our local community but also the players are joining in on the fun as well team captain Tyler Secura started a GoFundMe campaign earlier this week and he got a lot of his teammates and former teammates like Chris Versteeg to jump in and help out and you can find more information on how you can join the Ice Sox players donation campaign through GoFundMe that is benefiting all healthcare workers all healthcare workers in the state line community uh, during this troubling time as well. So icehawks.com, your number one source to find out all of that information. Well, let's go ahead and take a peek at tonight's matchup. It is Rockford Peaches Night. I know everybody is the sun is starting to shine and we're looking at what would have been playoff hockey, also the beginnings of baseball season. So I wanted to kind of mesh the two a little bit together on Ice Hogs Rewind this evening. The Hogs celebrated the famed women's baseball team, the Rockford Peaches, who continue to make an impact in our state line community community to this day and it was also pink in the rink night at BMO Harris Bank Center back in 2018 in the fight against cancer so two great causes coming together to celebrate the state line community and the fight against cancer is the Ice Hogs welcoming in a foe they don't see all that often from the Pacific Division the Ontario Reign earlier in the year they were able to take a visit out to Southern California win in Ontario and now they're looking to complete the season sweep as the Reign make their way to the Midwest to take on the Ice Hogs at BMO Harris Bank Center. So without any further ado, uh, enjoy tonight's Ice Hogs Rewind. Happy Friday, and we'll talk to you in the postgame show. This evening, he'll be down to our left-hand side as the Ice Hogs, again, in those pink Rockford Peaches themed jerseys. They'll be going from left to right. So Delia in goal, Victor Svenberg on defense with Cody Franson, John Hayden, Luke Johnson, and Matthew Highmore. The starting forward line for the Ontario Reign. It is Jack Campbell in goal with Mike Amadio up front with Johnny Brodzinski and Matt Molson. Sean Walker alongside Curtis McDermott on the backside as the Ice Hogs get things going offensively first. Here's Franson right wing, got a shot towards Campbell in and out of the chest pad there and the rain will come away with it left wing side. Cannot quite squeeze it up to Molson, and he turns the puck over momentarily. Now reverses it back to McDermott, who will bring it out to center ice. This Ontario Rain squad has plenty of bodies on down from the NHL club in Los Angeles. Paul Ledoux being one of them, catching the pass from the other, and Brodzinski intercepted by Peltier, and he'll bring it out to center ice for the Hogs. And Peltier held up, and that's going to draw a penalty here against the rain. So heading off to the box is going to be Alex Lintu Niemi. And an interference call against Lintu Niemi will give the Ice Hogs the game's opening power play just 45 seconds in. As Peltier looking to continue his success against this club just a couple of weeks ago, Tim, he recorded his first professional hat trick down in Ontario, California. Nice. You know, the ref, did, the first hit the ref was going to let go, it's the second hit is when he had to call the interference. Ice Hogs one for five against Ontario in that contest. They enter tonight's matchup still 30th in the American Hockey League at 12.2%. However, they have power play goals in six of their last 10. So here in recent history, they've done quite well going six for 36. For the Ontario PK, they are 21st 
in the American Hockey League at 81.8. They'll get the quick clear to get things started. So left to right, come back in the Rockford Ice Hogs. Gustav Forsling, what a great debut in an Ice Hogs uniform he had for the season just on Tuesday against Bakersfield. Eight shots on goal, that ties a season high, and he was ripping them away, especially here on the power play. But he'll pass this one off. Tanner Caro cannot handle, and the rain will once again get a clear. So Linton Niemi in the box for interference. Still a buck 14 left on this early power play for the Ice Hogs. Just over one minute gone by. Here's John Hayden to bring the puck into the zone. Hayden, good stick handling. We'll get around Oscar Fattenberg and bring it out to the far corner. He's got Tyler Sakura out to the blue line. Clendenning, D to D for Franz and up the middle. Sakura fires, blocker save, rebound, swarm of hogs in on Campbell. And he darts out the right pad in the defense. Able to collapse. Fattenberg will get the clear. Clendenning back to pick this one up. Already some great pressure here, Tim, by the Ice Sox. Plenty of traffic in front of Jack Campbell. The Ice Hogs, who of course average the most shots on goal in a single contest, know that this Reigns group has two goaltenders that are in the top 20 in goals against average. Their same percentage, not too shabby as well. We'll dive into the numbers in just a moment. But if they're going to beat these two net miners, they have to get bodies in front. And already you see two members in pink Ice Hog uniforms. On top of the blue paint, Sakura bringing this one late back in on the power play. He'll dump it in into the near corner, in fact, but back to grab it is Mike Amadio. He will quickly exit the zone, and that should do it for the opening man advantage. No score between the two clubs, but Rockford already three shots on goal, all coming on that power play as Linton Yemi now out of the box, bringing it into the zone. Left wing side, Matheson Acapelli. He'll dump it down to the near corner for Graham Knott. Not trying to dish this one off to Weidman, overskates the puck, and Matt Luff will bring it out for the rain. Luff right wing side, runs into a wall. It's Weidman, he'll just dump it right back in, and Campbell will come out to handle this one. Gives it on to Paul Ledoux, chasing him behind the net is going to be not, but Ledoux makes the play right wing, gets it out to center. Now cross ice pass for his D partner and Sean Walker. Bowling Green State University product. He'll dump it in onto Philippe Maye, a wrist shot, and that one high to the blocker's side of Delia. And has enough momentum to ring up the boards and come back out to center. Lin Tuniemi to control. Right wing side on to Matt Luff. Luff looking to get a shot away. Tracked down from behind by Knott. And the puck will come loose. Here's Victor Svenberg with it. Svenberg for the Ice Hogs. Up the left wing. Goes across. He's got Cody Franson with the jump. Franson into the offensive zone. Juggles it. Turns it over to the Park Ridge, Illinois native. And Michael Mersch, but Mersch cannot hold on to this one. Rims up the near side, and it's handled by the other number 27, and that's for the Ice Hogs and Andreas Martinson. His shot wide, but Sakura picks it up behind the net, comes up at the near circle. Sakura to the blue line, has his man Spedberg, fires that one immediately blocked by Luff. Sakura fighting for it, but Ledoux will chip it out to center. Good push here for the Ice Hogs to get things started. Only a couple of dump-ins for Ontario. For any offensive zone time, big hit. John Hayden levels his man, and Alex Lintuniemi goes down to the ice. Puck turned over at center ice. Lintuniemi cannot get a piece of him. It's Hayden again, barreling down the right wing. Puts it into the near corner. My goodness, what a tough start to the game for Lintuniemi. A penalty, and then gets steamrolled by the Yale product and rookie and John Hayden. 15.26 to go in this opening period. Ice Hogs with some speed up the left wing side. Little give and go. They break into the zone. Here's Luke Johnson. Backhands it in. Puts it down to the far corner there. It's picked off. And Fansenberg out to center. No. Cut down by Johnson just before it got to the line. He'll backhand it over to the far side. And Matt Roy will get it out to center ice. Roy out of Michigan Tech, so a lot of Midwest connections for this Ontario Rain group. He'll throw it into the far corner for Justin Auger, and he ran out of real estate, and Philippe Maye will bring it out to center ice. Early stages, first period, no score, and we're going to get ourselves a whistle, a way delayed offside. And this is going to bring the face off all the way down into the ice hog zone, or at least that's where they were going to go. Now they're just going to take it out to center ice. Shots three to nothing in favor of the Hawks. No score. 14-52 left in the first period. Face off at the center red line. Mike Amadio against Tanner Kiro. Two of the top centers in this game. And Kiro's going to have this one on to Anthony Lewis. Shovels it down in front for Peltier. Just underneath the stick. Puck kicked out to the blue line. Here's Billy Polka a drive. And that one knocked down. May have clipped off of Amadio. Who will bring the rush the other way. On to the NHL veteran. And Matt Molson. Wrist shot steered away. By Colin Delia, it was a floater. Molson looking for the redirect by Amadio. Couldn't snake it quite through. 
Molson gets it back out at center ice. Amadio right wing side on the broad. Zinski could not sidestep Carl Dahlstrom. And Dahlstrom, one of the two AHL All-Stars for this ISOC group, will yield the puck in the near corner. Walking in from the blue line is McDermott. McDermott throwing it back to Molson, covering for him. Left wing circle to the top. Brodzinski on to McDermott. Oh, lays it on. He's got Walker right wing. Shot through traffic and dealing with the save. Rebound carries up the near wing. McDermott handles it. Middle of the ice. Walker fires. Uh. Scores. Sean Walker through a screen. Goes high glove side on Colin Delia. And it's 1-0 Ontario with 13.56 to go in the first. So the real first sustained offensive push by the rain. They convert. And Sean Walker from Curtis McDermott from downtown. It looks like Molson may pick up the second assist. But that's Walker's fifth on the year. Approaching the halfway point of this opening period. Well, I'll tell you, he uh, didn't wind up to take a slap shot. He just had a nice quick wrist shot release and uh, I think it kind of caught the goaltender a, a little by surprise and he, I think he was also screened. Delia putting that left shoulder up there just couldn't get it high enough so a fast start for the Ontario Reign after they weather the real quick storm by the Ice Hogs in the opening minutes. Rockford off the ensuing faceoff. Here's Matheson at Capelli. Left wing side he'll get it into the offensive zone but Fantenberg will knock it loose and reset for Ontario, the rain, a record of 14-2, 0-0. Oh, when they light the lamp, first in a contest. And once again, the Ice Hogs, similar to Tuesday, chasing the game. They are the comeback kids. First period, not so much the best for the Ice Hogs. A goal differential of a minus 11, but they get better, obviously, as the game wears along. But certainly don't want to put yourself in too much of a hole. Is once again, Delia having to come up with a split save. Didn't know where the puck was. It was just a simple wrist shot in on target. And the Rockford Ice Hogs have to bring it out to center ice. They'll just quickly dump it on down. Forsling will rim it around for Tyler Sakura out of the right wing corner. Sakura going across for Robin Norell. He could not control. And once again, Ontario to the red line will dump. They're trying to make a change here, but the puck turned over. Here's Paul Ledoux takes a bump from Tyler Sakura. And he'll manage to get the play below the goal line. Andreas Martinson will take control there. Martinson looking for a couple of outlet passes. Runs into Matt Luff, but Martinson gets it back. And he'll retreat to safety behind his own net. On to Adam Clendenning. He knows a, a thing or two about this Ontario side. As he was a member of Tucson, the Roadrunners out of the Pacific Division. Not all that long ago. Only a couple of weeks, in fact, before making his second return to the Rockford Ice Hogs organization after being here about a, two and a half seasons. Ice Hogs right wing just pumped this one out to center ice. Philippe Maillet will come up with it. Lost it to Luke Johnson, and Johnson turns it over to Curtis McDermott. D to D, the rain just inside their own blue line. 11.58 to go in the first period. Ontario up one to nothing. Pulling this one out of his own net is Carl Dahlstrom. Right wing side for John Hayden. Back up the middle for Dahlstrom. Dahlstrom steamrolled by Justin Auger. So Auger picking up the physicality for Ontario. Really got a good piece of Dahlstrom out in open ice. Two big bodies colliding. And Ontario will slip this one on down past the goal line. Adelia, and this will be an icing call. So both teams with some big open ice hits to get things rolling. Of course, Ontario, you look at their roster, Tim, and Everyone 6'2 or higher. I think that's a requirement to play out on the West Coast. <laughs> 220 or more. And, of course, Justin Auger fit in that category. Yeah, he's 6'7". He's a minus 13, though. So, you know, sometimes with the big size and the hitting is uh, not the skill. And that's something that Rockford really wanted to pan into. In fact, talking to Dahlstrom, who just got a hit by Auger, chatting with him yesterday, he feels like that that physical game plays well into theirs just because they have the skill aspect. They can skate around. They have the speed and the skill, so they have the opportunities to duck around hits if possible. And Anthony Lewis, one of those small speedsters to feature on this ice hockey roster, he cannot catch up to this eventual icing call, so a defensive zone faceoff coming up. For the Ice Hogs, 11.07 to go in the first period. Sean Walker here in the early goings has given the rain a one to nothing lead. Walker, a rookie this year, and much like several members of the back end of the Ice Hogs, a mobile defenseman, not afraid to jump up. 
Ontario will win this face off. Roy, his wrists are blocked. Gets it on to Molson who will rim it around the boards. Finds Roy at the right wing point on the Fattenberg. Wrist shot fought off by Delia. Rebound put up the right wing and it goes into the ice hog bench. So that will give us our first officials timeout on the ice. 10.52 to go in the first period. The rain out in front of the Hogs early. One to nothing. You're listening and watching Rockford Ice Hogs Hockey on the Ice Hogs Broadcast Network. For all your shopping needs, stop by Oink Outfitters, located inside the BMO Harris Bank Center. Oink Outfitters is open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Fans can also shop online anytime on icehogs.com. Become a fan of the Ice Hogs on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Rockford Ice Hogs. Join our conversation on Twitter at twitter.com backslash go Ice Hogs and follow us on Instagram at instagram.com backslash Rockford Ice Hogs. For all the latest news and videos on your Rockford Ice Hogs, visit the official website home, icehogs.com. Fans can also purchase tickets and merchandise or visit the Ice Hogs social media channels. That's icehogs.com. Looking to grow your business and support the Forest City community? The Ice Hogs can help. Become a partner with the Ice Hogs this season and celebrate victories on and off the ice. Visit icehogs.com or call 815-986-6465. 10.52 remaining in the opening period of action. The Rockford Ice Hogs trailing the Ontario Reign 1-0 here in game number two of this head-to-head -head series. The second and final regular season meeting to get Together between the two clubs, all time. The Ice Hogs won 2 and 0 against Ontario. The last time the Rain were in this building was last season, November 13th, in which Ontario would prevail in a final of 3 to 1. TJ Hensick, who is on their roster now, the former Lake Erie Monster, Peoria Rivermen, will dive into his stats against Rockford in just a moment, but he would score twice in that contest. Former Ice Hog Kyle Bond would have the lone tally for the Hogs. Rockford bringing the puck out of their own zone. Left to right, they're skating with it here on this pink in the rink night at BMO Harris Bank Center. As Ontario forcing the turnover, Johnny Brodzinski on to Linton Yemi, back to Brodzinski, shovels his shot, blocked by Forsling, and the puck skitters to the left wing boards. Robin Norell fights his way out to center ice. Oscar Fentenberg battling with him, a couple of native Swedes, shoulder to shoulder, Mike Amadio coming in to help out. He'll jar this one loose, and on to Adam Clendenning. Who will lift it on to Gustav Forsling. Forsling just his second game as a member of the Ice Hawks since being sent down earlier in the week from Chicago to make room for Anisimov on that Blackhawks roster when he was healthy enough coming out of the bye week. The Blackhawks needed some space for him, so Forsling, just victim of the numbers game, comes on down to the Ice Hawks, but he is one for one and goals in games, so looking to contribute tonight. He'll put this one into the chest of Campbell, and that will lead to a Another official timeout on the ice. 9.50 to go in the first period. The Ice Sox trailing the Ontario Reign 1 to nothing. You're listening and watching Rockford Ice Sox Hockey on the Ice Sox Broadcast Network. Looking to grow your business and support the Forest City community? The Ice Sox can help. Become a partner with the Ice Sox this season and celebrate victories on and off the ice. Visit icehogs.com or call 815-986-6465. Don't miss a minute of AHL action this year. Tune into AHLLive.com to see every AHL game streamed all season. Access highlights and archive games and watch from your computer, tablet, or phone. Download the AHL Live app and follow your favorite team anytime, anywhere. Visit AHLLive.com now. Fans, you can catch the Ice Hogs all season long by tuning into Whiffer's Cozy TV on 23.3. Join Joey Z, Mike Peck, and Brittany Tulis 30 minutes before puck drop for Ice Hogs warm-up for all games, home and away, during the 2017-18 season. You can also listen to each and every Ice Hogs game on your computer, tablet, or mobile device by going to sportsfanradio1330.com or through the Ice Hogs mobile app. Just under 10 minutes to play in the opening period. The Rockford Ice Hogs trailing the Ontario Reign 1-0. Ontario. With the shot lead 7-4, to four. it was 4-1 to one, Ice Hogs in the opening three minutes or so of the contest. But once the rain got their travel legs underneath them, they were able to settle in, get some sustained offensive zone time. And Sean Walker, the game's opening marker at 6-0-4 from Curtis McDermott and Johnny Brodzinski. So two of the three that were just sent down from Los Angeles, picking up points right off the hop. 
Rockford looking to battle back here. Alex Weidman out there with Matheson Acapella and Graham Knott. Knott chasing this one out at center ice, but taken by Walker, the goal scorer, and he'll dump this one in behind Colin Delia. They're standing tall right now for the Ice Dogs between the goal posts. Right wing side. Here comes Matthew Highmore. Highmore leading goal producer for Rockford. Could not center this one up. Banked off of skates. And Michael Mersch, the leading goal producer for Ontario, will turn it around. Mersch with 14 tallies for Ontario this year. Part of 28 assists, 14 goals, and 14 assists. He is second on the team in overall points behind Mike Amadio. Tied for 21st in the AHL in overall point production. Highmore. Tied for second on rookies with his 18 goals and his 29 points first on the team and eighth among rookie players. Here's Philippe Maillet for the rain left wing side. Maillet looking to go short side on Delia. And Maillet got a piece of it with the knob of the goal stick. Ice Hogs avoid some danger there as it was a two on one stretch pass the other direction. Could not be caught up to by John Hayden. So Ontario with Maillet breaking in on the two on one elected to take the shot instead. But Delia able to leave back that right hand, his blocker side, and get a piece of it. Here's Maya on to Anthony Lewis. Wrist shot fought off by Campbell. And the rebound pops up. Matt Luff will take control. Luff up the right wing side. Has a man bursting into the zone. Jamie Devan out to center. Rice copped up and ends up coming back out to center. Andrew Crescenzi will take control. Devan, the former Milwaukee Admiral, a couple of seasons removed. He was with Stockton in the Pacific Division last year. He'll backpedal inside his own zone. Hits up Alex Lintuniemi by the Ice Hogs. We'll rip it right back around. Here's Glendening right wing side. On to William Peltier. Peltier behind the net. Backhands it. Looking for Caro. Cannot connect. And rushing out to center ice is Justin Auger. He gets tied up by Norell. And the Ice Hogs back to handle this one. Norell is going to catch this distant pass. Fires on goal. Campbell juggled. But quickly pounces on it before Andreas Martinson. We'll hold on tight. There's still time to secure your season seats. Season seat members enjoy the biggest discounts off of ticket prices, receive exclusive benefits, and get to have the same great seat at every Ice Hawks home game. Visit IceHawks.com to see all the great benefits and sign up or call 815-986-6465. Draw to the right-hand side of Campbell. He is 19th in the American Hockey League with a 2.61 goals against average. And a .919 save percentage, a record of 11-7-2. It is his 22nd appearance of the year. His backup tonight, Cal Peterson. He is 15th in the American Hockey League. The 2.58 goals against average. Ice Hogs will put this one around the net. Campbell out to play it. Will start the breakout. Left wing Molson on ahead for Brodzinski. Into the zone. Wrist shot. Fought off by the goal stick. Adelia again hits right above the blocker and off the knob. And deflects up and out of place. So that's twice now. Delia relying on a little positioning there to get a piece of it. And he'll knock this one out of play. He even gives the top of his knob a little tap with the hand. Then thanks for looking out for me. Uh, where's Barube? Is he injured? Barube, one of several scratches, still injured. But the good news is, is he is still playing the former LA Kings property. And at one point, an ECHL member of this Ontario Reign group before the Western AHL expansion. He's out with Snuggaroo 2 2, Darren Radish, the healthy scratch, Bondra, and Fortan. The other scratches for the Ice Hogs this evening. And of course, Darren Radish coming out as a healthy body. Polka was the healthy scratch defensively for the Ice Hogs on Tuesday. Just plenty of D men for head coach Jeremy Collin to pick from. Victor Svenberg, left wing side, keeps this one out at center ice. But taken away by the rain. They get it into shallow offensive territory. Smacked away. And here's Acapelli behind the back pass. Looking for Graham Knott. Could not get it through. A delayed offside call against the Hogs. And that'll give some open ice here for Ontario. TJ Hensick. He is out there playing with some pink tape strapped around his stick to support the pink in the ring cause. Hensick right wing side. He'll make his way into the offensive zone. Comes around near circle. Fires. Ends up getting blocked. And a body crashes out on top of the goal crease of Delia. Good battle and hitting the deck was Austin Wagner. Ice Hogs moving out to center ice. Here's Alex Weidman to the red line. Weidman, little touch pass over to the left wing side. He's got Hayden. Hayden to the top of the circle. Blue line, he's got Fortin. Ends up firing and a left pad save coming from Campbell. Dragged that back foot long enough. And Forsling just ripped it right off the toe. Boots its way out to center ice. 5.23 left in the opening period. It's 1-0 Ontario. As six minutes and change in, Sean Walker picking up his fifth of the season. 
Isog back inside their own zone, left to right, they're skating with it. Hayden up the near wing, finds his man, and Johnson, Johnson to the zone by Clendenning. Nifty move, but can't stick, stick handle around a second defender. Nice inside out move there, but could not complete the play. And the rain bring it back out to center. They turn it over, though. Luke Johnson, he'll kick it back, and there it's handled by Paul Ledoux. Those two, Tim, are cousins. Went to North Dakota together. Mom's sisters, so getting a second chance this year to play against each other. A little family rivalry brewing here this evening in Rockford. Distant shot coming from the rain. Devan off a rebound on the right pad of Delia. And that one rips up over top and a stretch pass for William Peltier. Goes out in front for Caro, but the puck jumping on to poke at the right wing boards. Caro gets it back. Caro centers it up for Peltier. Can't get the shot away. Campbell was selling the poke check. Space between the legs was wide open, and Carroll couldn't hit the target. Tanner Carroll in the near corner. Keeps the puck with them, though. The blue line for Billy Polka. He'll go D to D. Here's Dahlstrom, a rich shot into the belly of Campbell, and he will hold on tight. When the four check is rolling, it is rolling for the Ice Hawks. Couple of turnovers there, and Campbell forced to smother it down after some good pressure with Carroll getting the best options. Well, I like the fact they went D to D again, and you had mentioned that two defensemen scored on Tuesday. I think that's when this offense clicks is when the defensemen are involved in the offense. We'll take a step aside. 4.09 to go in the opening period. The Ontario Rain leading the Rockford Ice Hogs 1-0. You're listening to Rockford Ice Hogs Hockey on the Ice Hogs Broadcast Network. For all your shopping needs, stop by Oink Outfitters located inside the BMO Harris Bank Center. Oink Outfitters is open 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday and 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. on Saturdays. Fans can also shop online anytime on IceHogs.com. Become a fan of the IceHogs on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash Rockford IceHogs. Join our conversation on Twitter at Twitter.com backslash GoIceHogs. And follow us on Instagram at Instagram.com backslash Rockford IceHog. For all the latest news and videos on your Rockford IceHogs, visit the official website home, IceHogs.com. Fans can also purchase tickets and merchandise or visit the IceHogs social media channels. That's IceHogs.com. Looking to grow your business and support the Forest City community? The IceHogs can help. Become a partner with the IceHogs this season and celebrate victories on and off the ice. Visit IceHogs.com or call 815-986-6465. to go in the opening period of action. The Rockford Ice Hogs trailing the Ontario Reign 1-0. Shots in favor of the Reign 10-8. It was 7-4 Ontario, but Ice Hogs chipping away a little bit. They had the puck in the offensive zone briefly just off to our right-hand side, high above BMO Harris Bank Center here in Rockford this evening. But bringing it back out, Andrew Crescenzi for the Ontario side. Crescenzi. Lost his footing, trying to power his way out to the front of the net of Colin Delia. Stretch pass, and here comes Carroll. One-on-one, backhander, pad save by Campbell, and he holds on. Carroll sent off to the races, and Campbell on the breakaway comes up with the save. Left-handed shot, goes to the backhand, pulls it across, and Campbell wouldn't give anything between the legs. That's the same spot Carroll just tried before the TV timeout. He was looking to go five-hole as Campbell... Left a little opening there, and this time may have tried to bait him, and Carroll went back to it again, but Campbell comes up with another stop. And an offensive zone faceoff is a result. Draw to the left side of Jack Campbell, a former first-round selection of the Dallas Stars. Not all that long ago, second season with the Kings organization after a renaissance year a season ago. Matt Roy trying to get this one out for Ontario, but Svedberg keeps it alive at the left point. Fires in a right pad save coming from Campbell, this time through traffic. Fantenberg, right side, cannot get the clear. Battling is Tyler Sakura. Sakura has it pinned up along the boards. Mike Amadio digs it free, and he'll go back behind the net for Roy again. But Roy having some trouble as Martinson on top of him. Here's that four check we were talking about before the break as well. The three forwards. Keep that defensive unit of any squad looking over their shoulder, especially the Martinson-Sakura unit. 
And Martinson gets this one back out at center, but he needs a line change. He'll find Graham not fresh from the bench. Not barrels his way into the zone, gets a backhander in front of Campbell, but nobody ready for it out the other end. Slides in, feet first to the boards, quickly pops up, however, and Matt Molson comes away with it. Two and a half to go in the opening period. It's one nothing Ontario. Ice Hogs back inside their own zone. Quick rain dump there, make a line change here. Not with it again. Left wing, he'll chip it up the wall and down to the far corner. Ledoux is on it. Ledoux turns it over, however. Mathis Acapelli gives it right back. And Paul Ledoux, the former fighting Sioux, trying to angle this one back behind the net. Goes on to Madison Acapelli on the turnover. Rips around a shot way off target and carries up the near wing for Adam Clendenning. He'll keep the play alive for the Ice Hogs. Rims it around the end wall. Ledoux on a good board battle. Beats out Acapelli and gets it to center, but turns it over again. And here's Highmore with it this time. Matthew Highmore, left wing side for Johnson. Johnson pulls back to the blue line. Wrist shot. He was looking for traffic in front of Campbell. And Campbell will just glove it down and hold on tight. Well, Campbell's done a nice job of not giving up rebounds. He makes a save, and there's no second shot, and that'll go a long ways in winning hockey games. And that's something that the Ice Hawks are really kind of play into. As you see these distant shots, floating shots with traffic in front, and they're low to the ice, so you're expecting him to at least kick them out and maybe put it on somebody's stick, but you're absolutely right, scooping that glove up down low and not allowing for any repercussions from distant hog opportunities. Philippe Maillet, right wing side, gets this one out of the zone for Ontario. Late stages, first period, just a buck 37 left in it, and it's 1-0 Ontario. Here's Forsling, right wing side. He'll find John Hayden, who will dump it into the zone. Coming out of the net is going to be Campbell. Campbell quickly pushes it along, goes up the near wing, and he's got Walker on ahead for Michael Mersh. Mersh across the ice. He's got Maye, who from downtown with the nine iron sends it way into the protective netting. Does not hit off a body, so this will bring a face-off out to center. For all your shopping needs, stop by Oink Outfitters, located inside the BMO Harris Bank Center. Oink Outfitters is open from 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, and 10 to 2 on Saturday. Fans can also shop online anytime on iceox.com. And, of course, the exclusive Pink in the Rink merchandise out at Oink Outfitters this evening. So be sure to grab a little piece of pink in the rink as well as Rockford Peaches history and but, throughout the game a couple of montages honoring the Peaches. Plus if you have a blister you can get some ointment. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> 54 seconds to go in this opening period. one nothing Ontario. With that one Tim it should be 1-1. One, one. Jeez <laughs> Louise. But uh, <laughs> Rain right wing side will just chip this one out to center ice. Anthony Lewis just over the blue line, we'll dump this one on in. Coming up in the first intermission report, we'll catch up with Carl Dahlstrom, the one of two AHL All-Star representatives for the Ice Hogs. We'll take a look at the out-of-town scoreboard. It'll be a busy couple of nights tonight and tomorrow, the final evenings of the AHL before the All-Star break as Jack Campbell scoops up a rolling puck back in the Ontario defensive zone. And of course, break down this first period for you. 19 seconds remaining in this one now. Sean Walker, the only goal, comes at 6.04 from Curtis McDermott and Johnny Brodzinski. And Brodzinski opened up the scoring the last time these two teams got together a couple of weeks ago in Ontario. But the Ice Hogs just needed that period to settle in. Again, this is an opponent they don't get to see a whole lot. So it might take a moment to adjust. And you know, sometimes it like, it's, oh, well, sorry, go ahead. It looks like the LA Kings, though. Those jerseys really do remind you of the Kings, don't they? The white with black and a little silver dab to it as their captain, Brett Sutter, will square into this one. Sutter in his 11th season. He saw some time against Rockford when he was a member of the Iowa Wild before arriving to Ontario in a trade with L.A. and Minnesota about a season and a half ago. He'll help clear this one on down. Four seconds left in the period. On into the near corner for Michael Mersch, and Mersch will just let this clock run out. And That'll do it for one period of action here at BMO Harris Bank Center. The Ice Dogs pull ahead in shots. They get 12 on J native of Rancho Cucamonga, California. <laughs> you just like saying that. Just as fun of a place as it is to say. Exactly. But that is actually right across the street, literally from the arena, Citizens Business Bank Arena in Ontario. So he was a former season ticket member. 
for Ontario back in the old ECHL days with his family, and that's when the hockey bug bit him, and the rest they say is history. Puck moves in along the right wing boards. Ontario trying to set up shop in the zone again. Matt Luff slaps it out in front, hits Adam Clendenning right in the chest, and this one will get swiped out to center ice, and that'll be picked up there by Oscar Fantenberg. Fantenberg tonight, just his fourth game since coming down from Los Angeles. Fantenberg, 26 games with the Kings, two goals and seven assists on their back end. So the Kings, similar to Chicago, got plenty of options on defense. Matt Luff, right wing side, trying to get this one going again for the rain. Gets tied up in front of his bench. Knocked loose by Carl Dahlstrom and Clendenning will take control. Clendenning going across for Andreas Martinson, slaps the stick out of Brett Sutter's hands. But the rain will grab puck possession. Austin Wagner, right wing corner. Works out, now goes to the blue line for Linton Niemi. Fires off the pads of Delia. Rebound bounces to the near corner. Pinballs for a moment, but Sutter will settle it down. Sutter out to Linton Niemi again. Fought off by Delia, and the right pad save. Gets swiped up the right side by Clendenning. Cannot clear. Sutter with some help on the big kick by Linton Niemi at the point. Goes down to the corner for Wagner again. And run over as Dahlstrom will pick this one up and bring it out to center himself. Hit the red line and make sure this one gets through. Ice Hogs need a change there. 16.45 to go in the second period. It's 1-0 Ontario off the Walker goal. Six minutes and four seconds into the opening period. Puck turned over at center ice. Benefits the Ice Hawks. Here's Graham Knott. Drop pass Acapelli. Wrist shot goes wide of Campbell. Almost angled out the other side for Alex Weidman. He would love his first AHL goal to be a dandy like that. And Campbell having to face a couple of shots from Knott now as it bounces off his chest, then his mask. And Knott right there for the rebound on both looks. But Campbell, a little one-two save combination, and the Ontario Reign will settle things down. Three minutes gone by in the second period. Ice Hogs beginning the frame much like they did in the first. Some good offensive opportunities, a little forechecking, and getting some turnovers in the offensive zone. But just can't get anything past Jack Campbell at the moment. He'll come out and handle a dump in by the rain, right to left. Ice Hogs pressuring. Andrew Crescenzi turns it over at center ice. Highmore has it. He'll go across the ice. Has his man, and Johnson fires. Shoulder saved by Campbell. And the rebound gets away from John Hayden. Justin Auger will bring it the other direction. Auger straight to the chest of Delia. He squares up and will collect easily in the chest and hold on tight. Well, you know, what I'm enjoying right now is we're not mentioning or talking about the referees whatsoever. They're not a factor in the game. What you know a referee's doing a good job is when you're not talking about them. And a veteran refereeing crew at that, Terry Koharski, longtime official in the pro hockey ranks. He is out there with Alec Austin, Rhodes Dolan, and Ian McCambridge helping them out on the lines as assigned by the American Hockey League. Mike Amadio, after getting that scoring changed, now an 18-game point streak for him. Not consistent, an 18-game AHL point streak. He's been up and down with Los Angeles. Starts all the way back to December 9th. Curtis McDermott turns the puck over at center ice. Gives it over to Carl Dahlstrom, right wing side for Matthew Highmore. Highmore goes backwards into the ice on defensive zone for Billy Polka. Polka turns it over to Amadio, looking for the break in the zone. He's got Brodzinski, fires upstairs over the crossbar. Leaning into Adelia, trying to knock it down with that right shoulder of his. Knocked loose to the blue line. Here's McDermott firing this one. Just gets underneath Matt Molson and kicked out to the far corner. Now some sustained time for the Ontario Reign. Molson and Amadio battling into that far wing. Rips around the boards. Brodzinski cannot handle, but Walker pinching down. He'll go to the right wing corner. Dahlstrom is there for the Hogs. And out to center ice for John Hayden on the breakout. Hayden across the red line. He'll dump it down. Line changes for both sides. Four and a half gone here in the second period. one nothing Ontario. Andreas Martinson battling in the near corner. He was the first one on the puck, keeps it alive for a moment. Amadio coughed it up for a brief second. Now it just trickles out to center. That's enough for Ontario to catch a break and change out a couple of bodies. Long distance shot by the Hogs. Blocker to side by Campbell. He punches it high in the air. Hits off the top of the glass along the near wing and Maye with the stretch pass for the rain. Up the right side, he's got Matt Luff. Cannot hold on to it, goes back to the blue line for Roy. Behind the net, he'll rim it around. He's got Michael Mersch, who will escape to the left wing corner. Mersch to the top of the circle for Maya. Fires, split save, coming from Delia. 
You can hear that hit the toe cap of his skates. He had to drop all the way down and cover pipe to pipe to get a piece of that drive from Philippe Maye just inside the left circle. Ice Hogs will get the clear on out to center ice. They're trying to make a change in the process. Puck lost in front of their bench, and is going to get it again. Maye, the reigning CIS Man of the Year for Canadian Collegiate Athletics, loses it, comes on to Peltier. Shovel shot towards Campbell, but that puck was rolling. Couldn't handle it cleanly. Goes behind the net. Here's Anthony Lewis. Lewis coming up the near wing. Looking for Spenberg. Holds on to it now to the big body blue liner. But it'll jump out to center ice. Franson having to tag back up. Loses it and into the skates of Maye. One on three battle. Maye looking to get a shot off. He cannot. Good defense by Spenberg. Just tying him up and taking him to the backboards. William Peltier out to center ice. Here come the Hawks. Three on two with Peltier. Peltier right side for Franzen. And just out of his reach. Franzen off the far wall. Will just turn and fire. Left pad saved by Campbell. The rebound taken by Hensick. Play starting to open up a little bit. And an offside call against the rain. Will now slow things down. 13.36 to go in the second period. Ontario up one to nothing. A couple of end-to-end -end pushes for either side. But now we'll catch our breath. You're listening and watching <laughs> Rockford Ice Hogs Hockey on the Ice Hogs Broadcast Network. Looking to grow your business and support the Forest City community? The Ice Hogs can help. Become a partner with the Ice Hogs this season and celebrate victories on and off the ice. Visit icehogs.com or call 815-986-6465. Don't miss a minute of AHL action this year. Tune into AHLive.com to see every AHL game streamed all season. Access highlights and archive games and watch from your computer, tablet, or phone. Download the AHL Live app and follow your favorite team anytime, anywhere. Visit AHLive.com now. Fans, you can catch the Ice Hogs all season long by tuning into Whiffer's Cozy TV on 23.3. Join Joey Z, Mike Peck, and Brittany Tula 30 minutes before puck drop for Ice Hogs warm up for all games, home and away, during the 2017 18 season. You can also listen to each and every Ice Hogs game on your computer, tablet, or mobile device by going to sportsfanradio1330.com or through the Ice Hogs mobile app. 13 and a half to go in the second period of action. The Rockford Ice Hogs trailing the Ontario Reign 1 to nothing. Joseph Zakszewski with you alongside Tim Matilla. Scoring took place back in the first period. Sean Walker, a rookie defenseman for Ontario. A wrist shot from the blue line gets through. Face off out at center following an offside call against the rain that led us to timeout. Puck was deflected out of play. So that will give us another quick halt. Become a fan of the Ice Hogs on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Rockford Ice Hogs. Join our conversation on Twitter at twitter.com backslash go Ice Hogs. And follow us on Instagram at instagram.com backslash Rockford Ice Hogs. Brett Sutter in to take this face off. He is out there against Graham Knott in for the Hogs. And Knott will win this one away. Brett Sutter, 11th year pro, 717, now 18 tonight. AHL games played, 125 goals, 179 assists for 304 points. And we mentioned earlier a former member of the Iowa Wild, so he knows all, knows all about BMO Harris Bank Center. Sean Walker, right wing side, has this one. Austin Wagner, pardon me, out to the blue line for Paul Ledoux. He'll rim this one along for TJ Hensick. Hensick kicks it over to Sutter, cannot control, and Graham Knott will pull it out to center ice. Up the right wing, he's got Alex Weidman. Nifty move to cut around Lintuniemi. And the Ontario defense goes in, and Weidman holds on to this one. Matheson Acapelli battles along with Paul Ledoux. Those two hacking and whacking at each other, but Acapelli keeps puck possession. Ledoux doing everything he can to knock him loose, and Acapelli strong on the stick, keeps it alive. The good stop, Forsling at the left wing point. Return pass, he was looking for Highmore fresh on the bench, could not collect, and now Highmore right wing side. He's gonna try and dip past a pretty beaten and bruised Rain defense at the moment. Linton Emmy and Ledoux, they've been out there for a long while. The Forsling at the blue line, shoulder down by Campbell. He didn't even see that shot coming. Forsling let it go. It was upstairs, and it caught Campbell in the mask. He was a little surprised it hit him. Highmore with it behind the net. To the blue line for Clendenning. Across for Forsling. Let's it fly. Pad save. And a big rebound up the middle. Forsling gets it from Johnson. 
Good stop, Forsling rims it around the boards. He's got Johnson again, comes out of the far corner. Johnson with Paul Ledoux again. This defensive line for Ontario, they have been out there for a long time. Behind the net, Norell keeps it going for the Hogs. Pinching in from the right point is Svenberg to help him out. Svenberg onto Norell, looking for a centering option. Paddle save, coming from Campbell. The rebound onto John Hayden. Hayden spinning circles in the offensive zone. Out to Svenberg. Svenberg up the middle. He's got Franson. Fires! And that shimmies off a shin pad and into the near corner. Ledoux takes the tumble on down. Comes on to TJ Hensick and Hensick to center ice. He will punch it along to Jamie Devan. And finally the rain get a line change. That was probably a solid two minutes. <laughs> Ontario was just hemmed into their own zone. Ice Hogs will angle it down the right side. And cue ball this one right in on Jack Campbell who will hold on tight and make sure his team gets a much needed break. Well, I'll tell you, this second period has been a track meet up and down and both goaltenders have made some outstanding saves. This is good hockey right now. Ice songs they up their shot count to 19. Eight so far here in the second period for Ontario. They have seven in the frame, but in terms of puck possession and offensive zone time right now, heavily favoring the Ice Hogs, 11.07 to go in the middle stanza. Carl Dahlstrom off a quick clear to center by Ontario. Turns it up the right wing for Tyler Sakura. He'll clip this one into the offensive zone. Sakura behind the net now, battling, looking for the wraparound. Centered out for Norell. Had it sweeped out from underneath him at the last moment. On to Dahlstrom, fires blocked by Auger a couple of feet away. He'll turn the skates and rip this one into the near corner, but Martinson comes away with it. Andreas Martinson up the wall, finds his man in Billy Polk at the blue line. Wrist shot blocked by Mersch. Good defense by the forwards of Ontario as Auger and Mersch come away with a couple of shot blocks. Left side Auger looking ahead for Crescenzi, and he cannot haul in the pass. So Rockford will settle on down inside their own zone. Right to left, they're skating here in the second. Stretch pass to Lewis, left wing side. He'll dance his way into the offensive zone halfway through the period and the hockey game. Ontario up one to nothing. William Peltier across the ice, far wing. He lost it in his skates. Clendenning out at center ice will control. On to Tanner Carroll, left wing side for Forsling. Nifty move. Forsling centered it, cannot connect. Here's Lewis behind the net. Tosses it out in front for Forsling. Jams his shot, popped up on him. Good stick by Amadio. They get it out of harm's way. And up the right wing side, here's Clendenning again for the Ice Hawks. Clendenning to Forsling, turns the puck over, falling down. On to Molson. Molson right side, Amadio chip shot. And this one up over top of the goal crease of Colin Delia. Left wing, Forsling, he'll airmail this one across. He's got Peltier with speed into the zone. He and Fansenberg one-on-one, -on -one. he'll smush him to the back glass. And Matt Roy will come away with it. Roy left wing, he's got Molson again. Cross ice pass for Brodzinski to the red line, he'll dump it down. And both teams will make some changes. Quick break out for the Ice Hogs the other direction. You talk about a track meet, Tim? Well, here come the Hogs the other direction. Graham not left wing. He's got some momentum. Takes a hit from Walker. Dumps it into the near corner for Maie. Lost control. Kicked out in front of Campbell. Unsuspecting, but nobody there. In a pink Ice Hogs uniform this evening. Pink in the rink for breast cancer. The fight in these two teams. Quite a scrap here on the ice. Cody Franson cannot get the clear out of the Ice Hog defensive zone. Here are the rain cross ice. Looking for the one-time feed is Maie. Cannot collect. Puck bounces across the ice. Here's Matt Luff at the left circle. Luff turns, fires into the belly of Delia. And Mersch right there on the doorstep. But Delia will not give up the rebound. And that will give us a timeout. 8.38 to go in the second. 1-0 Ontario. You're listening and watching Rockford Ice Hogs Hockey on the Ice Hogs Broadcast Network. Ice Hogs game can be your community showcase. We want your ballerinas, cheer squads, martial arts demonstrations, youth hockey, and choirs all to perform during our games at the FEMO Harris Bank Center. Visit IceHogs.com or call 815-986-6465. The Rockford Ice Hogs have a ticket plan to fit your schedule. Season seats, mini plans, premium suites, and more are available for you to choose from. Save money off web fees, base price, and even learn how to get parking included. Visit IceHogs.com to see all the great benefits and sign up or give us a call at 815-986-6465. For all the latest news and videos on your Rockford Ice Hogs, visit the official website home, IceHogs.com. 
Fans can also purchase tickets and merchandise or visit the IceHogs social media channels. That's IceHogs.com. Become a fan of the IceHogs on Facebook. Stretch pass the other direction. Pelty shots 22 to 19. Delia, no question. Wrist shot, bottom offensive zone. The length of the ice. Back to the Colorado Avalanche organization, and he did all of that with five different teams. The Lake Erie now turned clear. IceHogs.com. Become a fan of the IceHogs on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash Rockford IceHogs. Join our conversation on Twitter at Twitter.com backslash Go IceHogs. And follow us on Instagram at Instagram.com backslash Rockford IceHogs. Looking, looking to grow your business and support the Forest City community? The IceHogs can help. Become a partner with the IceHogs this season and celebrate victories on and off the ice. Visit IceHogs.com or call 815-986. 6465. Eight and a half to play in the second period. Ice Hogs trailing the Ontario Rain here on Pink in the Rink. One to nothing. 21 18. The shots, however, in favor of Ontario, or pardon me, the Ice Hogs rather. The Rain with the puck in the offensive zone. They get a distant shot on Colin Delia. And he will let this one cut across the chest pad and into the corner. Breakout Ice Hogs, but. Ontario will take it right back. T.J. Hensick going across for Austin Wagner. Left wing will carry it into that far corner. Carl Dahlstrom will meet him up for Rockford. Out to center for Matthew Highmore. He's got Dahlstrom breaking in. Drop pass for Highmore. Wrist shot goes off the outside of Curtis McDermott. And this one will deflect up and out of play as it goes into the protective netting. Well, we've been talking about T.J. Hensick a couple of times, Mr. Matilla, a native of Howell, Michigan. So another... Midwest Connection, product of the University of Michigan. 37, now 38 career games for him against the Ice Sox. 18 goals and 28 assists for the one-time top prospect of the Colorado Avalanche organization. And he did all of that with five different teams. The Lake Erie now turned Cleveland Monsters, Peoria Rivermen, Hamilton Bulldogs, Charlotte Checkers, and now a member of the Ontario Reign in point production against the Ice Sox this year. Ontario looking to carry this play oh. into the offensive zone. Stretch pass the other direction. Peltier is going to beat out the icing call. We've seen a couple of those looks by the Ice Dogs. They'll just hammer the puck the length of the ice, knowing full well it's an easy icing, and they rely on the speed of a Peltier or an Anthony Lewis to beat things out. And this time Peltier gets around the defense, finds Lewis at the left wing corner. Goes to the blue line. He's got Forsling, D to D, Clendenning, wrist shot, partially blocked by Jamie Devan. And puts it into the far corner of his own zone. Devan being pinched down on by Adam Clendenning. And Clendenning will rip it around for Tanner Carroll. Carroll, left wing circle. Looking for some help, but Peltier was heading off for a change. And Ontario will clear it down. This will be an icing against them. So everything will come on back into the offensive zone for the Ice Sox. Is that the Hayden that was playing for the Blackhawks? That is the same John Hayden. Because I see he only played like seven games here, so he's been up in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Okay. Product of Yale University, a smart hockey player at <laughs> that. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. <laughs> Draw to the blocker hand side of Jack Campbell. Caught up with him the other day, and he's a political science major. I was like, well, I know it's only a rookie year, but are we looking at the future governor of Illinois or something? Like, what, what do we got going on here, John? He says, no, he's like, Politics right now are way too goofy, so I'm going to stick to hockey. I'd stay out of Illinois if I was going into politics anyway. Wrist shot by the Hogs off the face off, gobbled up by Jack Campbell, and he will sit tight. 7 1 to go in the second period. Shots 22 19 in favor of Rockford. Sakura, Martinson, and Norell are out there now. Martinson, three game point streak for him entering tonight, two goals and an assist. He'll help this one down to the near corner with Sakura right behind him. Sakura on to Martinson, bodied away. Out to center, Amadio, lead pass. Too far for Brodzinski. This one will go down, and Svedberg has to hurry back. Gets a little assistance by Sakura. Good pressure here by the rain now, and Cody Franson will step in, calm everything, and fire it up the right wing side. Franson. A much-needed veteran presence for this Rockford Ice Dogs group. 550 NHL games played. In fact, a former teammate of Ontario's Matt Molson. Both of them 
Former members of the Buffalo Sabres organizations. Molson with them this year is Ontario. A snap shot and a good glove saved by Delia. But when he was sent down after clearing waivers, his wife has some family connections in Southern California. And he was given the option to join the Ontario Reign. Here's Curtis McDermott. Fires from a distance and a blocker save off the post for Colin Delia. And this one ends up in the far corner. So the Ontario Reign have been testing that right-hand side of Delia a few times tonight. Knob of the stick back in the first period saved him twice, and this time the iron behind him. Here's Matt Luff bringing this one out of the far corner. Could not tuck it in, and Mike Amadio will keep it free. Amadio, right wing, puts it into the pads of Delia. No question he'll smother this one, and that will give us an official's timeout. Five and a half to go in the second. Still 1-0 Ontario, despite all the scoring chances on either direction. You're listening and watching Rockford Ice Hogs Hockey on the Ice Hogs Broadcast Network. Looking to grow your business and support the Forest City community? The Ice Hogs can help. Become a partner with the Ice Hogs this season and celebrate victories on and off the ice. Visit icehogs.com or call 815-986-6465. Don't miss a minute of AHL action this year. Tune into AHLLive.com to see every AHL game streamed all season. Access highlights and archive games and watch from your computer, tablet, or phone. Download the AHL Live app and follow your favorite team anytime, anywhere. Visit AHLLive.com now. Fans, you can catch the Ice Hogs all season long by tuning into Whiffer's Cozy TV on 23.3. Join Joey Z, Mike Peck, and Brittany Tulis 30 minutes before puck drop for Ice Hogs warm-up for all games, home and away, during the 2017-18 season. You can also listen to each and every Ice Hogs game on your computer, tablet, or mobile device by going to sportsfanradio1330.com or through the Ice Hogs mobile app. 1-0 the Rockford Ice Hawks trail in the Ontario rain here in the late stages of the second period. Joseph Zakszewski with you alongside Tim Matilla. Ice Dogs on the road tomorrow in Grand Rapids. 6 o'clock Central Time puck drop. Hope you can join us right here on Cozy TV as well as SportsFanRadio1330.com and the Ice Dogs Facebook fan page and IceHogs.com. So plenty of ways to listen and watch your favorite hockey club all season long as Rockford out of their defensive zone right to left will ice the puck on down. So another whistle coming. 5.22 to go in the second period. Then it's the AHL All-Star break. And for Rockford, after that Grand Rapids trip and the break, they'll return home on Friday, February 2nd. Hard to believe we're already going into February here, Tim. But February 2nd, the Manitoba Moose in town. It is Jake Smolinski night and bobblehead giveaway. Huh. Smolinski, the local MLB product, coming out of Rockford, Illinois. Played with Texas, Toronto, and now an outfielder for the Oakland Athletics. He batted 259. Last season before suffering an injury is the puck to flex out of play again. And this one with some velocity. Not all that far away from the press box. And that's pretty dangerous. And the fans looking around. Looks like everyone's okay. But a little zip behind that cross ice pass for the Ice Hogs. And well, you know, Smolinski was a quarterback. He also had a batting cage in his basement. And he was a committed athlete. You don't get there without doing the extra work. That guy is known for doing the extra work. And he was actually in the building today filming a, filming a couple of promotional spots for that game coming up on the second. And had him sign a couple of those bobbleheads. That'll be given away as well. So that'll be a lot of fun. So didn't get a chance to catch up with him too, too much. But after that upper body injury, he sustained anxious to... Get back and have a full season of MLB baseball ready to go. And, of course, spring training just right around the corner, hard to believe. But we'll see what the local Rockford, Illinois native can do with the athletics this year. Ice Hogs offside on the attack. Four and a half to go in the second period. Still 1-0 Ontario. Sean Walker the goal. That came at 6 4 the opening period from Curtis McDermott and Mike Amadio. Face off directly in front of the... Ice Hog bench, and of course, talking about baseball, the Ice Hogs wearing those Rockford Peaches jerseys that we've been talking and referencing to a couple of times tonight. But the Peaches played a major role during World War II, of course, when the men were overseas fighting. The women took over, they were the professional athletes, and they would shine bright in the 40s and 50s. And of course, 
The Ice, uh, the Ice Hogs representing the Rockford Peaches, the only team in that women's professional baseball league to stay the full 12 years in the existence of the league. So not only are the Peaches just famous thanks to the movie, but they're famous because of their sustained success here in the Forest City, and they went on to win four titles, three of which were all in a row. Well, Tanner Kiro hoping to help the Ice Ox push for a title this year. He has the puck back behind the net on to Anthony Lewis. Lewis jamming this one into Campbell. Goal mouth scramble. Five-car pileup on top of the crease. Everyone's swinging away at it, and the Ice Ox come out with it. Peltier to the blue line for Dahlstrom at the left wing point. Dahlstrom, wrist shot, looking for the redirect out of the reach of Peltier. Campbell without a stick. And this one's going to go out to the blue line. Delayed call. It's going to be against the rain. Derek Dermott left wing. And now the second penalty. The hand of the official comes up. So we might have two calls coming here. As everyone convening down in the near corner. Once the whistle sounds. You have the goal mouth scramble. Five bodies on top of the crease trying to get a piece of it. Peltier dug it free. And it looked like he may have drawn a hooking call or potentially a slash here. And then play moved along the delayed call. Delia rushed off the ice. And then the second arm of the official and Alec Austin. Koharski had the first up. And indeed, both infractions are going to be against Ontario. A cross check and a slashing call against the rain. And this is going to be a five on three for the full two minutes for the Rockford Ice Dogs with three and a half to go in the second. Yeah, and we were talking earlier that we really hadn't noticed the referees being involved in the game. And then you to call two penalties on the same play, a five on three going into the second period. This is a huge power play for us. A golden opportunity for Rockford. Of course, they're trying to tie this game up at one. Paul Ledoux and Jamie Devan are off in the box to serve the infractions. Again, two separate penalties. Paul Ledoux drew the first one on Peltier, and now we're going to get another call, and this is going to be an interference, but this might be going against Rockford. <laughs> so Terry Koharski, the veteran referee, quick to blow the whistle, and now things are going to even out a little bit, and this just comes three seconds into what was the five on three, and now every member of the Ice Dogs looking around puzzled because nobody knows who this interference call is against. Is that a makeup call, do you think, there, big guy? <laughs> Tyler Sakura is going to serve the time. So Sakura looking at the faceoff. He locked up Brett Sutter after Sakura won the draw. Sutter was trying to go through him, and he stuck out the leg a little bit. I don't know. He's That knee was a little out there and forced Sutter to maybe swing out farther than he should. So now it's an opportunity for the rain and they'll control it off the draw and score brett sutter on a redirection puts it over the blocker of delia and this is a shorthanded goal for ontario sutter his second shorthanded goal this season he has all of the shorthanded tallies for ontario he just turned his stick over from just inside the right circle and a great redirection by the veteran and nothing Delia could do there, and it's now 2-0 Ontario late in the second period. Face-offs matter. That was a clean win, and then a shot on net, and then a tip-in goal. Straight back to the right point. Wrist shot along the ice, and Sutter puts it home. Crossbar and down off the backhand of a redirection. All the more impressive. They're just now getting around to announcing the penalties, so plenty of... Action all of a sudden here to start wrapping up this period. Now it's still a four on three power play for Rockford. I don't want to call it a must score situation, but they want to get back into this game as soon as possible. Plenty of open ice as they set up shop down to our left. Here's Tanner Carroll at the near circle. Out to the blue line for Forsling. Band on the one timer. He'll hand it over to Anthony Lewis. Lewis to Forsling. Wants the one timer again. That's in his skates. Just can't set him up for what he wants. Lewis. And Forsling, they continue to change positions. Lewis now at the right circle, Forsling up the middle. Richter blocked by Sutter, rebound, cleared out to the blue line, but held in as Caro got back in time. Left wing point for Anthony Lewis. Lewis down for Caro. Caro looking for options. He's got Forsling, fires, and he missed the net. That time he got the one-timer, but off target. Comes around to the right side. He's got Lewis off to the near corner for Caro. Back to Lewis. He wanted Forsling. 
And Brett Sutter's going to cut it off. And now puck is intercepted. And Curtis McDermott, shorthanded, will handle it for the rain. He'll just work it to the red line and dump it down. So Brett Sutter, the shorthanded goal for Rockford. That is the seventh shorthanded goal they've given up this season. And in fact, the Ice Hogs, last time these two teams got together, Rockford scored twice shorthanded. Peltier and Sakura down in Ontario, California. But it's 2 nothing rain. Buck 44 to go in the period. 13 seconds left of this power play. And then it's going to turn into a brief man advantage as Rockford powers it through and scores! The puck just goes across the goal line. And the Ice Hogs strike on the man advantage and make it a one goal game once again. John Hayden on the doorstep gets it to pop over the outstretched glove of Jack Campbell. And Campbell reacted. He saw it go, put the glove down to swat it, but by that time it had crossed the goal line. The referees were right there. And Hayden on his belly forces this one through. And the Ice Hogs. Get the crowd rocking here at BMO Harris Bank Center. John Hayden, what a wealth condition he has been. Now a five-game point streak with his third goal over the stretch, third on the season to make it a 2-1 contest. So now the power play comes to a close for the Ice Hogs. It was four on three. And then with the offsets, it even became a very brief three-second man advantage for the Ontario Reign, but that has come and gone, and that was Ontario's first of the game, and Delia flashing the leather on a distant shot with Devan screening him in front. That was impressive glove save. So Delia swinging a little momentum even further on the Ice Hogs side. One twelve to go in the second. So breaking everything down, Rockford now one for three on the power play. Ontario is 0 for 1. Again, they just had a three-second man advantage on the interference call by Sakura that took place right off the faceoff to begin what was the five on three. Now 65 seconds to go in the second period, and we have ourselves a pretty good battle on our hands between these two clubs. You can feel the energy in the building. You almost wish these two could get together more often, just the way they're playing. Hard-fought hockey, aggressive, physical, with scoring chances to boot. Matthew Highmore, right wing side, flies this one into the offensive zone. Blocker saved by Campbell. Turn around, here come the rain with numbers, but Brodzinski flubbed on the pass. And it'll stay out at center ice. So John Hayden will pick up the goal. Adam Clendenning will grab the assist, and Clendenning Moves oh so much closer to the all-time assist mark by a defenseman. Rockford in transition. Here's Dahlstrom. Fires. Just tipped it wide onto Johnson. Johnson behind the net of Campbell. 24 seconds left in the period. Goes to Highmore in the near corner. Johnson rips it around. He's got Peltier at the top of the near dot. William Peltier looking for options across for Forsling. He bobbled this one. And the rain will get the clear. 10 seconds left. Anthony Lewis will dump it back on down. Alex Lintuniemi defensively for Ontario will just try and pin this one up. But ends up being dug free by Carroll. Carroll a backhander out in front of Campbell. Blocker save and the horn sounds to end two periods of action. We're making a one goal game again, 18-24 the time. Cody Franzen and Adam Clendenning picking up the assist, and now Clendenning eight assists away from tying the all-time mark among Rockford Ice Hog defensemen in assists as he's looking to track down Brian Connolly. So he was nine going into tonight's matchup. He scored last game, so that doesn't chip away at your assist lead, but Clendenning now on a four-game point streak with the assist here this evening. Colin Delia, 21 saves on 23 shots, returns to the net down to our left-hand side, left to right. The Ice Hawks skating here in the third period. Jack Campbell in goal for Ontario. He is off to the right-hand side, right to left. Ontario will move here in the third. 26 saves on 27 shots for him. Shots on goal in the second period. Both teams with plenty of them. Rockford had 15, Ontario with 13. Ice Hawks one for three on the power play. Ontario is 0 for 1. Puck is down, and here we go for what will certainly be an exciting third period. It begins with a bang. Icing call going against the Ice Hawks. So a defensive zone face-off 
Coming towards Colin Delia. Taking a look at the rain numbers. 13-0-1 record when leading after two periods for the Ice Hawks. 4-12-1-0. But the Ice Hawks, they've been the comeback kids here recently, Tim. They were down one going into the third period on Tuesday against Bakersfield. And then they had a four-goal outburst. They just wore down the Condors. And they were able to pump in four past Laurent Brossois en route to that 4-1 victory. So looking to keep that momentum and keep that pressure going here in this uh, third period of action. Ice Hogs off the icing call. We'll pull it out to center ice. Victor Svedberg, left wing. Gets it to the neutral zone for Matthew Highmore. Just 30 seconds gone by here in this Final frame, Svedberg sitting patiently, not really rushing this one too much. Finds Tanner Kiro now across the ice near wing. He'll dump it down to the corner, and Matt Roy will come away with it. Roy turns the puck over. It's Kiro again. He'll throw it behind the net. Now Anthony Lewis will come in, being joined by Peltier. So three members of the Hogs below the goal line. They'll draw three defenders, so a little mini scrimmage there. But the Hogs will come away with it. Clendenning at the blue line. He'll shovel this one down to the near corner. Finds Matt Luff on the turnover, but Carroll will sneak behind him and steal it away. Tanner Carroll out to, he's got, what is that, Forsling moving to the middle of the ice, but couldn't get a shot away. And Lewis will take it away from there. Moves it behind the net for William Peltier. Good shift brewing here. Ice Hogs all over. The offensive zone, Gustav Forsling left point shot. This one knocked aside by Campbell, the rebound in the near corner. Oscar Fentenberg could not get it out to center ice. Now in comes Maye, he'll chip it high into the air. And that will fly to neutral and both teams will reset. Minute and a half gone here in the third. Forsling bringing it out of his own zone. Chip pass ahead. Has his man in Andreas Martinson. Wrist shot. Pat away by Campbell. Rebound. Almost sent over top of him by the charging Sakura. He'll get the second effort to the blue line. Polka goes across for Dahlstrom. Back to Polka. Wrist shot. This one through. On to Sakura. Firing and a pad save by Campbell. Rebound. Push to the near corner. And Brett Sutter. Feeling the heat from Andreas Martinson. Martinson takes him to the boards. In comes Sakura. He'll wallop Roy. He'll swing it around the boards, and Ontario will escape to center ice. Good four checking from the Ice Hogs once again. Andreas Martinson back inside the Ice Hogs zone. Both teams changing things up. 17 and a half to go in the third. It's 2 1 Ontario. Polka now taking his turn with the puck in the Ice Hog zone. They want to change out everybody. On to Dahlstrom. Could not collect. Jamie Devan. Left wing side. Wrist shot on the turnover. Could not get it on goal for Ontario. Devan watches this one roll up the right wing side. Crescenzi. Crescenzi has a stick in his midsection. That belongs to Dahlstrom. Delayed call coming. And this is going to be against Dahlstrom and the Ice Hogs. And Ontario looks to get their first full-fledged power play as Dahlstrom pretty much had that stick locked in the midsection of Crescenzi. And Dahlstrom wasn't going to drop the stick. He just kept playing with it, trying to keep the strength Crescenzi to the outside. So a man advantage coming here for Ontario. Their first power play at the tail end of what was a wild finish to the second period. Lasted all of three seconds long. So they will jump on their second. Ice Hog PK, 27th in the American Hockey League at 78.6%. They kept Ontario off the board in their first meeting a couple of weeks ago for the Ontario power play. They are eighth on the man advantage at 19.3%. Ice Hog shorthanded, pushing the puck in the offensive zone. A little two-on-two -two battle with Caro and Matthew Highmore, but could not get a shot away. Fantenberg brings it in, an offside call going against the rain, and... Pretty easy for the linesman to make. They pretty much had four members jump in right around Fantenberg on the break-in. So that will bring a halt in play. 136 left on the Ice Hawks penalty kill. Still early stages, third period, 2-1. Ontario out in front. Well, face-offs matter right now. And if you can win the draw, then you can kill another 20 seconds. And Brett Sutter has been the key face-off guy for Ontario's head coach in Mike Stuthers. Third season with Ontario, fourth in the LA Kings system. And his first season when the Kings AHL affiliate was in Manchester led them to the Calder Cup title. So the Ice Hogs, here in recent history, last week they took on Cleveland, who won a Calder Cup a couple of summers ago. They had Grand Rapids last weekend, Grand Rapids tomorrow. They won it last year. And then you're looking at Ontario, a team that won it three seasons removed. So you're not looking at... 
you're pretty much looking at Calder Cup worthy squads to measure up for Jeremy Collin. If you're the ice hockey coaching staff, you're using this as a barometer of where is your team prepared at this stage of the season. And also you're talking about good programs with the Kings and the Red Wings, for example. Ice Sox cannot get the clear out to center ice. Philippe Maillet right wing side. He'll back in this one along. He's got his man and Fontenberg. Fontenberg fakes the one-timer. Goes back to Maillet at the right wing circle. Riz shot may have been redirected. Ends up in the near corner. And Lintuniemi will pick it up. Lintuniemi looking for a lane to get it to the top of the crease. Cannot. Ice Sox right side. Peltier will clear it on down and both teams will make some changes here. Four minutes gone in the third period, just 42 seconds left. Here on the penalty kill for the Rockford Ice Sogs. Rushing out, here comes Mike Amadio into the offensive zone. Amadio, they'll dump it behind Delia, but nobody there for Ontario. And it'll be an easy clear for the Hogs and Cody Franzen. And Jack Campbell will once again have to set up in the rain defensive zone. You know, I have not seen the wave done by uh, the BMO fans before. Have you? Fans trying to rally around this team, and <laughs> so far so good as the Ice Hogs have responded quite nicely in front of a great crowd here on Pink in the Rink night, the ninth annual Pink in the Rink for this Rockford <laughs> Ice Hogs organization. <sighs> Another clear coming from the Hogs. Out of the box comes Dahlstrom, and that'll do it for the rain power play. Now 15.08 to go in the third period, and Dahlstrom's going to start the march out to center ice. Ontario drops to 0 for 2 as Dahlstrom has it in the offensive zone. Right wing circle for Anthony Lewis. Lewis steals the puck away from Jack Campbell, who goes wandering. And that'll result in a spinorama wrist shot from Lewis. Popped up over top of the net and lands right below the goal line. Tanner Carroll putting on some pressure. Carroll to Justin Auger. Auger rims it around the boards, and he put a lot on this one. Ends up going all the way down for an icing call. And... Ontario will have to stay back in their defensive zone. 14.38 to go in the third. Ontario right now at the slight advantage, 2-1. to one. You know, Clendenning and Forsling has got to be one of the best AHL defensive pairings in the whole league. Offensively gifted both sides. And, of course, Forsling, you've seen his shot a couple of times tonight. Hasn't been able to fully unleash it, but Clendenning, an assist. Him and Franzen pushing the puck. Very offensive-minded, almost an extra pair of forwards out there for head coach Jeremy Colladin. And what's nice about that is this is a very defensively sound Ice Hogs group too. If one of them goes wandering, someone all, almost always comes back to cover. We've seen Tanner Carroll with that group. Backpedal for Forsling and Adam Clendenning a few times tonight. Luke Johnson at center ice. He's got Forsling and here he goes with the puck. Forsling will lead the charge into the zone. Goes across for Acapelli. Broken up, and now the race the other direction as Austin Wagner falls down. Wagner looking for the backdoor pass. Could not get a shot away, and the net is knocked off its moorings. As Matthew Highmore comes back to help out, Austin Wagner had the defense beat on the angle. Well, the only problem was is that the puck was out of reach, just could not haul it in, and then he had a pass across that just would not agree with him. And then Highmore sliding feet first into his own goaltender. Could not collect, and Wagner is wondering why there was no penalty call on him getting pulled down. And Brett Sutter, the rain captain, wants to explain, express his issues with Terry Koharski, the official this evening. But we'll take a step aside. 13.57 to go in the third period. Ontario edging out Rockford at the moment, 2-1. to one. You're listening to Rockford Ice Sox Hockey on the Ice Sox Broadcast Network. Support the Forest City community? The Ice Sox can help. Become a partner with the Ice Sox this season and celebrate victories on and off the ice. Visit icehogs.com or call 815-986-6465. Don't miss a minute of AHL action this year. Tune into ahllive.com to see every AHL game streamed all season. Access highlights and archive games and watch from your computer, tablet, or phone. Download the AHL Live app and follow your favorite team anytime, anywhere. Visit AHLLive.com now. Fans, you can catch the Ice Hogs all season long by tuning into Whiffer's Cozy TV on 23.3. Join Joey Z, Mike Peck, and Brittany Tulis 30 minutes before puck drop for Ice Hogs warm-up for all games, home and away, during the 2017-18 season. 
You can also listen to each and every Ice Hawks game on your computer, tablet, or mobile device by going to sportsfanradio1330.com or through the Ice Hogs mobile app. Under 14 to play in the third period of action, the Rockford Ice Hogs. Trail on the Ontario Reign at 2-1. Joseph Zakszewski with you alongside Tim Matilla. Shots on goal 29-23 in favor of the Ice Hogs, but Ontario has the puck in the offensive zone. A couple of snaps off the circle. Following stops by goaltender Colin Delia, and he'll come up with another one as a drive by Roy from the right point. We'll go right to his chest, and Delia will squeeze it tight. Yep. Ace Hogs back in action tomorrow night against Grand Rapids, but tonight certainly have themselves in the thick of a nice battle with this visiting Ontario Rain squad for the second and final head-to-head -head meeting between the two. Yeah, well, you made a point that the forwards do come back when Forsling, Forsling and Clendenin jump. And Highmore, that was a great example of him coming back and going right to the net. Breaking up the defensive effort for Rockford on what was a two-on-one. Austin Wagner just could not get a pass or a shot off. The puck was just rolling away from him. Now the Ice Hogs in the offensive zone. Maye and Lewis. A couple little speedsters. Short in stature, but big in the heart. Battling along in that far corner. And those two continue to joust away. Lewis will win out the battle and keep it alive. He's got a man out in front. It's Carroll, a backhander denied again by Campbell. He had a breakaway in the first period and another break here in the third. And Jack Campbell comes up with another monstrous save. Matthew Highmore loses an edge but dumps the puck into the offensive zone. Ontario quick to break it back out. Here's Michael Mersch, right wing side. Goes across the ice. He's got Matt Luff who will dump it down. 12.40 to go in the third period. Tanner Carroll, my goodness. A pair of golden opportunities one-on-one -on -one with the goaltender. He tried to go five-hole in the opening period. This time went upstairs, but Campbell got that right shoulder up high enough. Mike Amadio, who has his point streak extended to now 18 games with that assist back in the first period. He'll backhand this one around to the blue line. Puck fought off by Delia. Delia has it trapped in the glove and a little fancy figure skating to bow out of traffic in front of him. And everyone will convene the Ice Hogs, the team in the American Hockey League that has been penalized the fewest, Tim, on average. They are now in single digits, averaging 9.89 pims per game. Fewest in the AHL, Ontario right in the middle of the pack, 2.79, and that was a key for Coach Colleton and this group was just to stay disciplined. Ontario, a heavier team, have some guys that might want to try and get underneath their skin a little bit and off your game. But no pushback there for the Ice Dogs. They just want to keep playing some five-on-five -five hockey and wear down the opposition. A dozen minutes left in the third. They're trying to tie things up at two at the moment. So certainly can't afford to have anybody go off into the penalty box and give the rain an opportunity on the power play. Adam Clendenning defensively for the Hawks. Cannot get this one away. Here's Brodzinski. Puck bounces off the stick of Hensek on the doorstep of Delia. Scrambles. May have got a piece of it. And it goes behind the net. Clear by the Hogs. Graham Knott gets it just out to center. Ontario smacks it back in, but McDermott plays it offside. So that will bring a halt in play. Great stop by Delia on TJ Hensick right on the doorstep. Delia moving to his left, and Hensick had that puck on his forehand, and actually that looked like he just rolled off the toe of his blade, but Delia was down and was in a full stretch on his side, reaching to that far post. Ontario will control the draw at center ice and dump it on in. Ice Hogs overskate the puck. Sakura gives it right over to Wagner. You know he wants another crack after being denied. That centering effort. After beating out the defense of the Ice Hogs a few shifts ago. Jamie Devan through center ice for Ontario. Dumps this one around. Carl Dahlstrom and into the far corner. Back to pick it up is Billy Polka. Polka right side for Sakura. Who will backhand it out to the neutral zone. But Lin Tuniemi is there. Goes across the ice for his D partner and Paul Ledoux. He will dump it down. Carries up the near wing. Everyone looking for the puck. It's underneath Martinson. He was tangled up with Andrew Crescenzi. It will escape to center. Now some bodies falling all over the place. Both teams having trouble finding their footing here on this pink ice at BMO Harris Bank Center. Anthony Lewis will chip the puck up the left wing. 
Oscar Fansenberg will come back to haul it on down. Fansenberg up the middle. He's got Maye backhanded pass to the far wing. On to Matt Molson into the zone. Molson goes out to the near blue line. Fansenberg had to go behind him. And it'll actually angle all the way back into the ISOC offensive zone. 10.27 to go in the third. 2-1 contest. Rain out in front. Matt Roy left wing. He'll shovel it into the offensive zone. Both teams going off for changes here. Victor Svenberg behind the net. As Cody Franson left wing side for Anthony Lewis. Lewis up the middle of the ice for Tanner Carroll. Carroll will dump this one in. It skips but goes way <laughs> over top of the net. A little problematic there, but Campbell just watches it. Whistle on by. Matt Luff on the breakout for the rain. Left wing side for Brett Sutter. Sutter into the zone. Goes behind the net. Pester by Clendenning. Puck centered up. Right pad save. Coming from Delia in tight. Delia right on the goal line. Deep in his net, but makes the stop. Luke Johnson goes over to the left wing. Looking for John Hayden. That one jumps away from him. So all of a sudden, the puck and the skating just not making it quite so easy for either group. Adam Clendenning, right wing, brings it into the offensive zone. Wrist shot, knocked down by Campbell. And he will hold on and grab an official's timeout on the ice. Nine and a half to go in the third. The Rain holding on to their one goal lead. It's a 2-1 advantage their side. You're listening and watching Rockford Ice Sox Hockey on the Ice Sox Broadcast Network. Looking to grow your business and support the Forest City community? The Ice Sox can help. Become a partner with the Ice Sox this season and celebrate victories on and off the ice. Visit icehogs.com or call 815-986-6465. Don't miss a minute of AHL action this year. Tune into ahllive.com to see every AHL game streamed all season. Access highlights and archive games and watch from your computer, tablet, or phone. Download the AHL Live app and follow your favorite team anytime, anywhere. Visit ahllive.com now. Fans, you can catch the Ice Hogs all season long by tuning into Whiffer's Cozy TV on 23.3. Join Joey Z, Mike Peck, and Brittany Tulis 30 minutes before puck drop for Ice Hogs warm up for all games, home and away, during the 2017 18 season. You can also listen to each and every Ice Hogs team on your computer, tablet, or mobile device by going to sportsfanradio1330.com or through the Ice Hogs mobile app. 9.30 to go in the third period of action. The Ontario Reign on top of the Rockford Ice Sox. 2-1. Joseph Zakszewski with you. As Rockford trying to power in the game and tying a tally. Taking a look at some of their team leaders. Cody Franson alongside with Gustav Forsling. Four shots each to lead the team. Both of them defensemen. Something you touched upon back in the first period, Tim. Getting the defense involved in your offense. Tyler Sakura, Tanner Carroll with three shots alongside with Victor Stedberg, who has three. So the blue line firing away. Offensive zone faceoff. Ice Hogs have it. John Hayden buried behind the net by Curtis McDermott. Two big bodies tumbling on down. And Ontario will come away with this one. Right wing side, they'll find Matt Luff. Throws it back to Curtis McDermott. McDermott back up the far wing, and Luff may have got a piece of it. It's enough to go down, and Ontario will make a line change here. Ice Sox collect. Left to right, they skate. Here's Matthew Highmore up the far wing. Highmore will toss it back to his own blue line, and Billy Polka will take a second look. Polka up the near wall. He's got Robin Norell into the offensive zone. Reaching to poke it away from him, Alex Lintuniemi. Lintuniemi, native of Finland, going one-on-one -on -one with a Swede in Norell, and... The Finnish native will win out and guide it up the right wing boards. Cody Franson will pick this one up inside his zone zone. On to Victor Svedberg. Had it bounce off of him. Justin Auger pushes him through. But Svedberg down on one knee makes the play. Gets it back to Franzen up the right wing. And on to Andreas Martinson. Norell and Sakura bump into each other as the puck got changed mid-flight. On to Martinson who will... Plant himself back out at center. Now wait for those two to tag back up before lifting it below the goal line. Eight minutes to go in the third. Aisong's looking to tie things up at two. Gustav Forsling down the left wing. Puts it below the goal line. He'll now join the fun with Andreas Martinson. Martinson brings it around to the near corner. Shoulder to shoulder, bumping and grinding. Gets it over to the near wall, but Austin Wagner will take it away. Wagner puts it right into the body of Clendenning. He's got a man with speed. Here's Carroll. Fires. This one may have ramped off the stick of Roy at the last moment. But Carroll 
Came flying across the blue line and has it ramp up and out of play. 7.42 left in the third. Well, you, you wonder if because there's over 4,000 people here and maybe because the ice has been worked with a little bit differently because of the pink, that, that could be why the puck seems to be bouncing more than normal. I don't know. Draw will be to the right-hand side of Jack Campbell. Anthony Lewis and company along with Tanner Kiro chatting things over. Mentioned back in the first period, Campbell, second year with Ontario and the Kings organization after a renaissance year last year, went 31, 15, and 6 in 52 appearances, 2.52 goals against average. After coming over from the Dallas Stars organization in a trade during the offseason. And it's been lights out ever since, but he and his backup, Cal Peterson, have been platooning one and two. In fact, only three times this year has the Ontario Netminders appeared in two consecutive games. And you got to go back to the early stage of the season. And Peterson, who would most likely, if that trend continues, get the start tomorrow for the rain in Milwaukee, he would get two of those three. Billy Polka defensively for the Rockford Ice Sox has it at his blue line up the near wing for Matthew Highmore with the lane fires and he sends it wide to the blocker's side of Campbell. Puck carries up that far wing backhanded along by Matt Roy. Roy up ahead for Matthew Molson. Molson in the offensive zone stuck away by Carl Dahlstrom. Puck lost behind the net now gives it right to Molson and that puck wouldn't settle for him either. Skitters off the stick and into the near corner. John Hayden will pick it up. Hayden into the offensive zone, but Luke Johnson is offside. He picked up that back leg a little too soon, Tim. And that will bring a whistle with six and a half to play in the third. Yeah, that's unfortunate. He had to pick up his leg so he could get out of the way of the player. Otherwise, yeah, see that right there on the, on the replay? He had to pick up his leg to get out of the way of the player. Otherwise, it's not an offside and it's a good opportunity, but the ref or the linesman had to make that call. Face off right in front of the Ontario bench. Matt Tompkins on the counter. Backing up Colin Delia today. Will look to potentially redeem himself after suffering the loss last weekend in Grand Rapids. As he might be eyeing the start tomorrow after a long bus ride tonight for the Rockford Ice Sox to Grand Rapids, Michigan. And they lose an hour with the time change. So every little bit plays a role. Six minutes to go in the third period. Rockford trail in the rain. Two to one. Andreas Martinson left wing side for Robin Norell. Bodying and shielding that puck with the backside. And ends up coming along and across for Tanner Caro. Caro one on two battle. Dances around McDermott. McDermott cannot pin him down. Caro out to the blue line. He's got Clendenning. Sidesteps the man. Now breaks the knees of Justin Auger again on to Forsling, fires into the chest of Campbell. Had to take a second look, but he eats it up and will hold on tight. Little shimmy and shake there by Clendenning to get Auger to move out of the way and set up a scoring opportunity, but we'll take another promo timeout. Five and a half to go in the third. Ice Hogs looking to tie things up. You're listening and watching Rockford Ice Hogs Hockey on the Ice Hogs Broadcast Network. Looking to grow your business and support the Forest City community? The Ice Hogs can help. Become a partner with the Ice Hogs this season and celebrate victories on and off the ice. Visit icehogs.com or call 815-986-6465. Don't miss a minute of AHL action this year. Tune into ahllive.com to see every AHL game streamed all season. Access highlights and archive games and watch from your computer, tablet, or phone. Download the AHL Live app and follow your favorite team anytime, anywhere. Visit AHLLive.com now. Fans, you can catch the Ice Hogs all season long by tuning into Whiffer's Cozy TV on 23.3. Join Joey Z, Mike Peck, and Brittany Tulis 30 minutes before puck drop for Ice Hogs warm-up for all games, home and away, during the 2017-18 season. You can also listen to each and every Ice Hogs game on your computer, tablet, or mobile device by going to sportsfanradio1330.com or through the Ice Hogs mobile app. Five and a half to go in the third period of action. The Rockford Ice Hogs looking to tie things up at two with the Ontario Rain. Have an offensive zone faceoff. 
Just off the glove hand of Jack Campbell, who's been a little busy here in this third period, and we're going to get ourselves another whistle, and this might be an offside call going against the Ice Songs. Adam Clendenning has been towing that line pretty closely, and it looks like the back referee and Terry Koharski called him on it. So everything will shift back out to center. Scoring started in the first period. 6.04, Sean Walker, his fifth of the year for McDermott and Amadio. But then at 16.37, Brett Sutter from McDermott to make it 2-0 briefly before John Hayden made it a one-goal game. That was on the power play at 18.24 of the second. Ice Hogs bringing this one back in the zone. Here's Tanner Carroll, walks out in front of Campbell, melts down the crossing effort, and will hold on tight. Tell you what, the individual battles between Tanner Carroll and Jack Campbell have been incredible to watch here tonight. Carroll with a couple of breakaways, Campbell with dancers, and then this time tries to cut across the goal mouth. And he had some momentum. But Jack Campbell coming up with an answer. Campbell right now, a 35 save performance. Colin Delia has faced 27 Ontario shots. Coming up with 25 saves. Both goaltenders have been tested with quality opportunities. Both goalies have looked outstanding today. Ontario will win this face off in their zone and move out to center. Two on two. Maye with Molson. Wrist shot. Pad save coming by Dealey with the right leg, and he'll guide it into the near corner. Floated out to center ice on the clear by the Ice Hogs. Luke Johnson looking around, finds Clendenning. Clendenning partially fanned on it, ends up. Landing on a Highmore stick anyway, so no damage done. But then Highmore loses it, and Michael Mersch will take it away. Mersch, product of the University of Wisconsin, just up the road in Madison. He'll throw this one behind that of Delia, and the Ice Hogs will look for the breakout. Forsling on to Highmore. Left side, Hay Hayden. Little give and go with Highmore. Wrist shot. This one pops up and goes all the way across down to the near corner. Mersch will glove it down and rip it up the right side, and that'll be enough to get it back to center. Both teams will change it up. 4.15 left in this third period. Ice Sox trailing 2-1. Rockford looking to tie things up and potentially fight for the series victory here this evening. They won 5-2 back in Ontario on January 10th. But they have yet to pick up their first win against Ontario in this building. They dropped their first ever meeting here last season in November. 3-1. Well, the Ice Sox back in the zone. Open to change their fate. Tyler Sakura overskated the puck, and Mike Amadio will bring it out the other direction. Amadio into the zone with speed, looking over his shoulder. Goes the blue line, McDermott fires in this one. Right down Main Street and into the chest of Delia, who will hold on tight and grab another whistle. Yeah, Delia looks sharp. I mean, both goaltenders have really kept their teams in this hockey game. Delia, a couple of strong saves. Especially in the beginning of this third period. Yeah, T.J. Hensick on the doorstep and outstretched. Had to dive back to that far post. He now has 27 on the night. But Jack Campbell, right now he's got 35 angling his way. As Ontario win this faceoff near circle. Lynch and Yemi on to Brodzinski. Fanned on the shot. It was tipped away by Caro. And gives it on to William Peltier in the right wing boards. Peltier. Into the zone, Carroll falls, a little slow to get up, but Peltier keeps it alive. Now Carroll will engage. On to help out Peltier, he'll go to the blue line for Victor Svedberg. Wrist shot on its way, blocker save coming from Jack Campbell. Rebound goes to Anthony Lewis. Lewis behind the net for Peltier. Peltier to the blue line for Lewis, one time rising and gloved down. That went right to the mitt of Brodzinski. Could not get it to center, however. Ice Hogs were changing though, so they will just dump this one in. Tanner Carroll on the backswing out to center will take possession. Left wing for Gustav Forsling. Little floating shot and an easy one to make a save on for Campbell. And he will hold on. 246 left in the third period. Full court press is going to be on now for the Rockford Ice Hawks. We'll keep an eye on Colin Delia. And in fact, it looks like they might be pulling Delia now. Wow. So down by one, head coach Jeremy Collin is going to yank his goaltender with 246 left. So it's six on five, and he feels like if the pressure is going to happen, it's going to happen now. Wow. Well, you know, you got to win the draw. I'll tell you that right now. And TJ Hensick will step in here against Luke Johnson. So six on five with just a little under 30 to go, or th three minutes, pardon me, to go here in the third. 
False start off the faceoff, and the officials have to adjust the clock a little bit. And the infraction will go against Johnson, so John Hayden will have to step in. Well, Ontario will win it and flip it out to center ice. Adam Clendenning will settle it down. Clendenning looking, brings it up the right wing boards. Now goes across for Forsling. Left wing side for Hayden. Gets it into the zone. Rolls off of his stick. McDermott will have it. Puts it on the backhand and sends it off the glass and out of play. It'll be an offensive zone draw once again for Rockford. So that, oh, sorry, 225 left now in the third. If that puck doesn't hit the glass, would that be a two-minute delay of game? That would have been a delay of game. If it didn't hit the glass or it didn't hit off a stick before leaving the playing surface. Timeout. Timeout, Rockford. Jeremy Carlton's going to pull everybody together, and we'll keep everything right here for you on Cozy TV and Sports Fan Radio 1330, and we'll recap the game scoring for you and how we got to this six-on-five. Assistant coach Derek King pulling everybody in to draw up the play. Ontario with the full first two goals of the contest. 6-4 of the opening frame. Sean Walker, his fifth of the year from Curtis McDermott and Mike Amadio. And then at 16-37 of the second, Brett Sutter shorthanded. They get 2-0 from McDermott. So a two-assist game for the big body blue liner for Ontario. And then about two minutes later, John Hayden on the power play. That same power play that saw the shorthanded goal against. Well, the power play goal for Hayden, his third from Cody Franson and Adam Clendenning at 18-24 of the second period. So the Ice Hogs with this extra attacker and their goaltender pulled. Come out of the timeout looking for the first goal of the third and hoping it is the game tying tally. 225 left in the third. They have been peppering Jack Campbell. And they will win the draw, but it actually splits the defense of Franzen and Clendenning and will come out to center, so the Hogs have to reset. Clendenning across for Franzen, left wing side. Finds Highmore, who will get it into the zone. They'll blast it in. Rims around the boards for Gustav Forsling. Forsling chips it along, bounces away from McDermott for a moment. Hayden comes in, reaching for it. Ends up going back to McDermott, and Clendenning will hold on. Clendenning at the blue line. He's got Franzen tip out in front. Campbell looks behind him, but melts it down with the left pad and holds on. Great redirection. It was a high shot from Franzen. Goes straight down to the ice, and Campbell looking over that left shoulder, but has the puck pinned up against the pad. Yeah, he's got to be star of the game if they win this one, huh? <laughs> and he has found himself in situations like this all season long and all last season as well. Being the backbone of this Ontario Reign defensive effort. So far, 10 shots, 10 saves. They have him listed for here in the third. Face off to his right. Hogs will win it. Franzen at the left wing point. Will be chased down the wall and into the corner. Backhands it around. He's got Tanner Caro. Caro up the right side for Forsling. Middle of the ice for Clendenning. Back to Forsling across. They got friends in one-timer. Partially fanned on. Still gets it towards the front of the net. Everybody's swinging at it. And the Ice Hawks keep it alive. Here's Highmore. Backhander turns it over to Sutter. Ontario looking for any clear they can get. And they will get it out to center ice. Clendenning will tag back up. 127 left. Here in the third period, again, the net is empty for the Ice Hawks. Clendenning will just chip it towards Campbell, and the forecheck is on for the Hawks. Gustav Forsling backhands it behind. He's got Hayden on to Highmore in that left wing corner. He'll swat it around, hits the outside of the net. Couple of bodies convene, and it's dug out by Tanner Carroll. Behind, he's got Highmore, left wing side to the blue line for Billy Polka. Polka rolling puck, swats it around, intercepted by Paul Ledoux. He'll put it up the glass, back up that same wing. Polka's got a piece of it onto Hensick. Hensick falls down, out to Clendenning, keeps it alive with a lunging effort. Clendenning, second effort, towing that blue line, still holds on and keeps it onside. 44 seconds left here in the contest. Out to Polka, to Clendenning on the backhand, sends it up the middle of the ice. Uh. A couple of whacks in Ontario will chip it on down. Brodzinski got a hold of it. Johnson will come away with this one. 30 seconds left in the game. Ice Hogs need one to tie. Up the right wing. Here's Martinson into the zone. Andreas Martinson down to the near corner for Curtis McDermott on the turnover. McDermott cannot get it away from Martinson, though. To the blue line. He's got Dahlstrom. Fakes the shot across. One-timer. Scores! <laughs> Drive from the left wing point, and the Ice Hogs tie this thing up with 14 seconds 
left in the frame. You know, when you pull your goalie, there's like a 10% chance you're going to score. And uh, they just did. The other thing that I thought was interesting, out of the timeout, he had three defensemen, when they're down a goal, three defensemen on the ice, instead of having mostly forwards and one defenseman or two. So he really believes in Franzen, Forsling, and, and Flandenic. And then Dahlstrom, nice play there, huh? Cross ice for the one-timer, and it looks like maybe Luke Johnson got a piece of that one on top of the goal crease to make it a 2-2 game with 14 seconds left here in the third. So the Ice Hawks hammer one home, but now Ontario on the turnaround. We'll get this one into the offensive zone. Couple of wrist shots fought off by Delia. Ice Hawks have it, they'll backhand it to center, and we're going to overtime. They wow. pulled their goaltender with two minutes and 40 seconds yeah. left in the game. Fontenberg, the three skaters to get things going for Ontario. Rain will win the face off and retreat back behind their own net. Fantenberg up the middle of the ice. They got Brodzinski on a break. Brodzinski backhander fought off by Delia and holds on tight. Johnson lost his stick and gave the clean look to Brodzinski. Unhappy he didn't get a penalty shot potentially out of that one as Johnson was all over him. But he stayed with it and then Johnson just lost his stick and Brodzinski just could not Battle the blade and the puck at the same time, and Delia comes up with the first big stop of overtime. Yeah, I think if he doesn't drop that stick, it is going to be a hooking call. And I was thinking the same the thing. Stick. Yep. Face off will be to the right side of Delia, so good on Johnson to let that thing go before it became a bit of a problem there. We saw just the other night in overtime by Toronto that happened right off the opening face off of overtime that sent the Blackhawks down. Matthew Highmore with the puck for the Ice Hogs. Brings this one into the offensive zone. Highmore looking around, brings it off the corner. He and Fantenberg in a nice battle, and Highmore's going to take a tumble down to the ice. In comes Dahlstrom. Puck is loose, and Philippe Maye looking for Matt Molson. Maye and Molson into the offensive zone. Dahlstrom comes back. Good right pad save as it bounced in on goal. Maye will bring it out to center ice and reset everything for Ontario. First minute is gone here in overtime. A 2-2 contest. Alex Lintuniemi brings the puck into the offensive zone. Rolls up on him. Curls back around at the near point. Goes across Molson. Tip out in front. And Delia another save. Boots it to the left pad. And now William Peltier will pick it up. Peltier waiting for some new line mates. Will chip it backwards. He's got Gustav Forsling. Forsling up the middle. Now he's got a lane. Forsling, a bouncer though. Has to pull back in the near corner. Swiped off of his stick by Lynn Tuniemi and Peltier will come back into his own zone. William Peltier goes up the right wing for Anthony Lewis. Now on to Forsling with some momentum. Gustav Forsling into the zone. Drop past Peltier. Spun off the puck, but Anthony Lewis has some room. Lewis behind the net on to Peltier. Fires into the chest of Campbell. And the first shot on goal by Rockford. A doozy from an off angle. But Campbell will sit tight with 3.11 left in the extra session. You know, three on three, they're going two forwards, one D-man. But you can't tell that the D-man doesn't look like a forward. In Forsling and Clendenning and Dahlstrom, right? I mean, they all can carry that puck. Glendening out there now with Johnson and Hayden. Crescenzi, Auger, and then Fontenberg again. So head coach Mike Stuthers loves having Oscar Fontenberg on that back line for this overtime hockey. Luke Johnson with the puck from Glendening. Johnson right side, fires, scores! Johnson in overtime! Grabs the victory for the Ice Dogs, three to two. So what happened there was you're playing man to man in the zone, right? It's three on three. But the Ontario Rain players ran into each other and they kind of got mixed up. And so Luke had a clean shot to the net. And that was the difference because they ran into each other because it was man on man and they were trying to switch. He goes low stick side on Jack Campbell, the game winner. And a beautiful shot posted in as we take a look at the replay. Luke Johnson, the game winning goal. The Ice Hogs grab the game tire with 14 seconds left in the third. What a way to end this little homestand before the All-Star break and heading to Grand Rapids a little bit later on tonight. 
three to two in overtime. The Ice Hogs over the Ontario Reign. We'll be back in a moment for the Ice Hogs post game show. We'll recap everything and get you all set up for tomorrow night as the Hogs and Grand Rapids Griffins will line up at Van Andel Arena in Grand Rapids, Michigan. You're listening and watching Rockford Ice Hog Hockey on the Ice Hog Broadcast Network. It was another thriller for your Rockford Ice Hogs as they tie up the contest on Rockford Peaches Night and Pink in the Rink in the final minute of play. And then Luke Johnson with the overtime heroics to send everybody back home happy at the BMO. Well, once again, thank you so much for joining us on this broadcast and another happy Friday to you. We have made it through another week together and we look forward to doing so many more as we roll on through the month of May. Again, we would love for you to send in your nominations for the Hometown a Heroes program. You can do so at IceHogs.com. Also contribute to the IceHogs Charitable Foundation and the Players Foundation on the GoFundMe. All that information on GoIceHogs.com and that's your number one spot to find out all the latest information and any future Ice Hogs rewinds that may be coming up here pretty soon. But until then, enjoy your weekend and stay safe, and we'll see you at the rink.